Welcome to our video series on LLM Ops, where we explore the journey of bringing generative AI applications into production. My name is Takeda Higuchi, and I'm in the Azure AI product marketing team. With me today, we have uh, Vishnu from the Customer Success Unit team. Uh, during the course of this video series, we'll delve into the concept of LLM Ops, why it's so important in the era of Gen AI, and how you can get started with LLM Ops using Azure AI. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the first episode. So in this episode, we'll focus on the introduction of LLM Ops, as well as the first step of the journey, which is ideating and exploring. But let's start with why um, it's why LLM Ops. As you know, Gen AI is everywhere today. And but despite the promise of um, Gen AI, there are some challenges to fully adopt and build your own generative AI applications in production. Uh, challenges include model accuracy, hallucination, compliance, data privacy, and security concerns. Additionally, integrating diverse data sources and absence of standardized lifecycle processes for model operationalization and governance have, have been significant hurdles. And we're witnessing a shift from traditional ML ops to LLM ops, tailoring these operational lifecycle to leverage uh, large language models. LLM Ops focuses on enabling ML engineers and app developers with assets like LLMs, agents, and APIs, and emphasizes metrics such as accuracy, quality, and cost. This shift is about enhancing efficiency and managing the unique demands of Gen AI. In the real world, we believe that the LLM lifecycle looks like this. It includes three distinct loops, all encompassed by the fourth loop. The first one, ideating and exploring. This is for finding and trying various LLMs. Um, and the next one, building and augment augmenting. This is to augment the capabilities of LLMs with RAG and prompt engineering. And then third one, operationalizing. This is, this is to actively monitor models and apps and uh, managing to make sure that everything is running in a compliant and then secure manner. So now, you have a basic understanding of what the uh, what LLM Ops is and how its lifecycle looks like. Let's dive into the first loop, which is ideating and exploring in this episode. You learn how to discover LLMs in the Azure AI model catalog, how to leverage models as a service, which allows you to deploy and fine tune models without managing underlying infrastructure, and how to use benchmarking to assess which model meets your business needs, and how to search prompt catalog with sample prompts. A key feature in this loop is Azure AI Model Catalog, available in both Azure AI Studio and Azure Machine Learning. Model Catalog is a hub for discovering foundation models. Uh, the catalog includes some of the most popular large language and multimodal foundation models created by Microsoft, Hugging Face, Meta, Mistral, and also Azure OpenAI Service. And these models are uh, packaged for out-of-the-box usage and are optimized for use in Azure AI. At Ignite last year, we introduced the uh, availability of Model as a Service uh, that offers pay-as-you-go inference APIs and hosted fine-tuning, making it easier for developers to build Gen AI apps by offering foundation models as an API without the hassle of managing deployment code or infrastructure. Llama 2 from Meta and Mistral's premium large model are already available with Mass, and we're actively working with various model providers to bring their models to Mass. With that, I'm passing the button to Vishnu to see the ideating and exploring loop in action. Thank you, Dagoto. In order to discover the models in Azure AI Studio, we have to uh, create a project first. And then once we have the project, we can go into the Explore tab where we will see the recent announcements on the latest models, including a Mistral, as you see there. And we will see all the models that Azure uh, has uh, uh, created for you. We can select the models by by the, the model model makers, for example, uh, models from Meta. Uh, by clicking on these these collections, uh, Hugging Face, uh, OpenAI, Mistral, and so on, and it's easy to 
uh, also filter these models by uh, by the task itself like you are building a a, a conversational uh, more copilot so you can just select this and it'll show all those models and for example if you want to deploy a, a meta model uh, like llama uh, from from meta you could uh, select meta and you will see all those models if you want to deploy those models you would click on let's say more llama 7 uh, 7 27b and what Azure offers you is a nice interface here where you can see the model details and what this model is about and um, you know the parameters it can take and so on. And as Takuda was saying, without even deploying the model, you can use the model as a service. So you can simply start asking the questions here like what is, um, let's say, uh, how far is uh, Mo from the earth? So you can start asking the questions right here without even deploying the model. So you see right here, you get the answers. If you want to deploy the model and you still have the option, uh, you can click on deploy and uh, you can follow the instructions and uh, with the click of a button, a model will be deployed. If you want to deploy the OpenAI models, uh, it's slightly different because OpenAI uh, models are already in Azure. So you would select uh, Azure OpenAI and let's say you want to deploy a GPT-4 model. Uh, when Once you click on the GPT-4, you will see the details of this model and what, uh, what flavors are offered to you. And uh, again, by clicking on the deploy, you can uh, deploy these models. So since I've already deployed this model, so I don't have enough uh, 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 quota here and uh, but when i do the for the first time it will uh, it will go through and what you would do here is select the deployment name and what version of the model you want to you want to select and uh, and uh, even the advanced op options like selecting the content filter uh, token limits and so on once you deploy the model uh, you can you can go to the uh, a build section where you can interact with the model in the, in the playground uh, for example, see here, I, am, I, I have the GPT-4 model and you can start asking the questions like, yeah, same question like how far is uh, is the moon from the earth? And it'll, it'll, it'll respond uh, to that question. In the next episode, we will take a deep dive into building and augmenting these models.